So do you want to be on a specialized unit in the police department, such as SWAT, canine, school resource, detectives, or are you in the process of applying for a position on a specialized unit? Then you want to watch this video because I will give you the best advice possible to help you get on that specialized unit. Hey, what's going on? It's Scott. I like to help keep police officers alive and thriving considering the tumultuous times we're in. But considering I did work in the profession for a while, I want to offer you some advice to help you along in your career so that you can be on specialized units or whatever you want to do so you can be that much better of a police officer for the public. And I have to throw this out there. Just because you watch this video and do what I say is not a promise that you are going to end up on the specialized unit, okay? Please understand I'm giving you my advice. I'm giving, based on my experience, what I've seen from others while I did work in law enforcement. And I don't think it can hurt you, but I'm not promising anything. Having said that, in my opinion, the first thing you need to do is to understand for a specialized unit, you need to do some time on the road. I think that's incredibly important. I'm not talking six months to a year. I'm talking a few years, but that's my opinion considering how short staffed some departments are now. Unfortunately, uh, they, they have no choice. I, I mean, you could be a rookie and do less than a year on the road, it seems, and then boom, you could be put into a specialized unit. But in my opinion, you need to do some time on the road or if you work for a sheriff's office, yeah, you're going to be in the jail for a little bit before you get out there on patrol or a specialized unit. But no matter what point you are in the career, my next piece of advice is whatever specialized unit you're thinking about being a part of one day, you have to be seen by that unit. Like you don't want the time you apply for the unit for the person in charge to be like, who the heck's this officer? You don't want that. I know it seems so obvious, but it happens. So how do you not be seen for the first time just during the application process? Well, from my experience, I networked with the canine officers that I knew at the department where I wanted to work. I, I even networked with them before I even joined that department. And then when I did get on the department, anytime a suspect fled a crime scene and there was the canine brought in to run a track, guess who volunteered as backup with the canine officer? Me. And then anytime there was a canine officer on scene of something and they needed whatever assistance, I was there. And then I also, on my own time, went to the training sessions. Now you could do this for SWAT too. Like if they allow it, can you go to the training sessions? Or if you know of an op that SWAT is going to be on, can you volunteer to be the transport vehicle if an arrest is made or if you want to work as a detective one day are detectives on scene how can you help them just be seen by these specialized units I'm not saying kiss their you know what no be seen do quality work and be good backup for them the next thing is whenever that position comes available to be on SWAT school resource detective canine whatever the case may be, street, com street crimes unit, there's so many different specialized units, hostage negotiator, whatever. Whenever the memo comes out or the email comes out or the announcement comes out, however it does come out saying, we are taking applicants for such and such specialized unit role, put in your application or whatever they require immediately. Don't procrastinate on it. I can't say for sure if you putting in first helps you in any way. But if you put in at the very last minute, I'm not saying they're ruling you out, but how bad do you really want it? And how well are you really going to do at it if you're already showing that you're procrastinating? Now, sometimes I understand situations come up, you cannot get it in till the last minute. However, I'm just saying, don't procrastinate on it. If you really wanna be a part of something and you really believe you could provide value to the department and the public because you'd be in that specialized role, once it comes available, you need to put in for it immediately once the announcement is made. Now, when it comes to putting in for something, at least based on my experience, they could very well ask for a memo stating who you are, why you wanna be on the unit. This is not your time to write a book. <laughs> be very brief with it, but not too brief. Basically, what you have done, why you wanna do it, and your sincere interest in the application process for becoming such and such role, whatever it is. The main thing is the memo is not a dissertation unless you are told otherwise specifically from someone in your department directing you to make the memo very, very long and drawn out as required for the application process. Once again, I can't speak for everybody. This is just my experience with the few departments that I did work with throughout my law enforcement career. And if they ask for a resume, please understand your resume has to be very neat and organized and put your achievements on there that are relevant to the specialized unit. You might not have thought about this and if you did, I'm just reminding you of your good judgment to do that because think about this. All right, so you're applying for SWAT. Who cares if you went to DARE instructor school when you were working in the schools? That, that, that has nothing to do with it. But you do not want your classes that you attended, your certificates, your credentials, whatever, to be longer than a page, page and a half at most. 
Seriously, I've seen some people turn in resumes and they were like three, four pages all with accomplishments. I'm, I'm happy for them that they earned all that kind of stuff and they did great work, but no, a resume is a page, page and a half. Then you absolutely at the top of the resume, when you list out what you've done, you start with the current time and then work your way back throughout your career, which sometimes for some police officers is not that long. So you're not going to have a long resume. Therefore, it's very important you list out skills that you have in the resume based on the jobs you have done that are relevant to the assignment. I cannot stress that enough. What is what you're listing relevant to the assignment? Are you using the same words that are in the description of the position that's open? Are you using those same words or synonyms of those words in your resume? It's very important. Show you have the skills, show you have the knowledge, and hopefully they, they are impressed with your resume. And when it comes to SWAT, I was never on SWAT. Unfortunately, got Rocky Mountain spotted fever right before the SWAT tryouts. Couldn't go, but it all worked out because I was able to join the canine unit. The SWAT or not. Anyway, when it comes to SWAT, you obviously have to pass a physical assessment. And it's not a walk in the park by any means from what I've seen my friends go through when it came to SWAT assessment. So if you haven't been working out and you put in for SWAT and you know that assessment's coming up, come on, get with it. You have to make the time and make sure you stretch and eat well to assist your body, particularly if you have not been working out as much. You can't just throw yourself into a CrossFit gym and tell them to give you everything they've got at you and then not eat well and not stretch you're going to get hurt you're going to get burned out you're going to be miserable and you just probably you probably won't go back so stretch eat right get the bad food out of your house don't go out to eat during patrol when you're when you're out don't, don't bring your lunch bring something healthy that way you're not susceptible to going to into a restaurant when there's a bunch of deep fried food really wants you to do well on the physical assessment if you try out for the SWAT team but it's absolutely important that you are in shape or get your butt in shape so that you can meet the requirements and then continue to stay in shape because it's very important for the profession as is as well as your mental health next is the interview you will probably be interviewed please understand the interview is not about how much you want to be on the unit i'm sure they're glad you really want to be on the unit what matters is how much value can you provide for that unit thus in turn how can it benefit the department which ultimately the department is there to protect and serve the city the county wherever the jurisdiction is so in the interview i'm not saying that you tell them what you think they want to hear no be yourself they can tell if you're being inauthentic you know when people are being inauthentic tell them what you bring to the table and why you would be a good choice it's very awkward at times to brag about yourself and talk good about yourself, but you have to do it in an interview only in the aspect of what can you bring to the table that the other applicants can't and why would the department benefit from getting you on that specialized unit. You have to make that clear during the interview. Also, dress nice for the interview. I have seen so many officers before walk into interviews with Sunday afternoon clothes on or short sleeve shirt uniform. Forget that. No, you wear a suit or you wear your class A very nice formal uniform. You have to make an impression, get a haircut, shave, whatever the case may be. Once again, all these things are just my opinion but heartfelt advice to you if you want to get on a specialized unit. And if you don't make the unit, you know how you can eventually get on that unit or increase your chances by not giving up. If you don't get on the unit, then don't give up. Keep working on it. Be seen by them. Help them out. Do not get bitter. Let it make you better in your journey and pursuit of the specialized unit, it will be worth it. Because look, in 2000, I was a high school intern for my hometown department and I had a great time, but I knew I wanted to work as canine and I just networked for years and years and years. Finally in 2012, I was able to get on the unit. 2012, started law enforcement in 2007 and then finally in 2012, got on that unit. It took five years, but I was glad for those five years, I was able to go to different trainings, build up experience on the road, working as a patrol officer. So when I did get the dog, I had some experience behind my belt, but still, you can't give up. This can't be a short-term thing. This has to be a long-term thing if you're not able to get on the unit your first time you apply. And yeah, you might have to wait for a few years or five years or longer before you get on a specialized unit. The main thing is they keep a healthy perspective and persevere. Do not give up. Stay healthy, do and be great because you can and you must. Take care of yourself and may God bless.